Hi everyone, my name is Han Al Fahel. I'm an applications engineer here at Keithley Instruments and I want to show you how to use our 2230G triple channel DC power supply with our Kickstar software. Okay, so here's the Kickstar software and as you can see on the left hand side you have all the various apps that enable you to control a lot of our Keithley instruments. And one specific app that we will be talking about today is the Power Supply app. The Power Supply app, I'm going to show you how to run the, all three channels of the Power Supply simultaneously. And I will also show you an example of a list sweep across a diode to look at the output characteristics of a diode. So here you can see as I double clicked on the app, it, the power supply that's connected to my PC already appeared and that's the 2230G. That's the triple channel output. DC power supply and it's connected via USB. So if I go ahead and click and I hit OK, I'll get the power supply app started. And you can see here under settings, this is all where you could do all of your settings and control uh, of, for the power supply. Uh, so you can see there are three channels on this power supply. And for each uh, channel, you could do, you see a bias mode here and the level and the voltage level and the current limit as well. And you can see it here, you can see your readings once you enable the output to be on, you'll be able to see voltage readings and current readings on all three channels. So there are three different modes that you could do for each channel. You could do a bias mode, or you could do a list, mode, a list sweep, or you could disable the channel, right? This, if you want, to have only one channel turned on, you could disable the other two uh, channels. So on the first example, I, I'm going to show you how to turn all the channels on at the same time and get readings from them. So we'll just do the bias source mode on, in the first example. So on channel one, I have a diode connected to it. So I'm going to go ahead and source about 0.7 volt and I'm going to keep my current limit at 100 milliamp and everything else I'll, it stays the same including the over voltage protection and this you might need in case your device's impedance might change abruptly and it might cause the source level of the voltage to go higher than what you have uh, set your level to and this would work as your over voltage protection it won't allow that voltage to go higher than that level. Uh, the measure range on this power supply is 3 amp, it's set to 3 amp. And we have one more setting down here is a source to measure delay. If you need more settling for your measurement, you may want to add an extra delay here. But I'm going to leave this default for this example, but you may want to change it as well. So we go to channel 2 and we do the same thing, right? Bias, I have a 1K ohm resistor connected to channel two. So here, the nice thing about having multiple channel, you can have multiple devices connected to your power supply and turn them on all at the same time. So there I could source 10 volt into my 1K ohm resistor, right? I'm gonna be around 10 milliamp for my current. So about 100 milliamp is okay for my current limit. Channel three, I have it connected to an electronic load and the electronic load is in constant current mode at 100 milliamp. So I'm just going to go ahead and source a level of one volt here. And channel three is a, a five volt a channel that you may want to, you could use it to for, for, for certain devices like on your circuits if you need uh, the third channel. So it doesn't go up to 60 volt like the other channels do on this, on this power supply. So there I got all my settings ready to go. All I need to do is just turn the output on and it will turn all my channels on and I could see already my output is turned on and we're waiting on our measurements back and there you can see you're getting your readings your live readings right from the power supply here uh, about 700 millivolt we set and about 14 uh, milliamp for my diode I go to channel 2 10 volt 10 milliamp that's across 1k resistor it's about what we expect and channel 3 I'm going into um, the electronic load, right, to one volt, 100 milliamp. So it's all what we expect. So I go to the table. The nice thing with Kickstart is that we could uh, record all of your data. All of your readings are being recorded in a table format and as well and on the graph, right? 
all of my voltage readings from the from the power supply and all of my current readings are all being recorded for all three channels. You can see all three channels are being recorded here, right? And you can see some simple statistics here. Where we have your min, your max, your mean, your standard deviation. If we go on the graph, you can see all of the voltage and current measurements are all being recorded for all three channels. And then let's say if I want to look at only one channel, I could just easily uncheck the boxes for channel one, channel two, channel one, channel two on current and there, and I could auto scale. And there I'm looking at one channel alone, and that's the, the one that's going to be uh, the ELO, the 100 milliamp, the one volt, uh, you have two Y axis. Now you could change that. I could change my X axis as the time. I could ch change it if I'd like to make it whatever um, voltage or current level from any different uh, channel. I'm going to show you that in the next example how I'm going to change. So this is right. You could get all this data here. This is for three channels example. Go ahead and turn the output off. Another nice feature with Kickstart is you could export all of this data that you just uh, retrieved into a CSV or you could even export into an XLSX file. You could also export your graph and you could do it for the selected run or you can export it for all the runs and you could choose the path where you export to. We also have this auto export feature. This is a, a new feature that's been added that would automatically export each new run that you have. So now let me just go back and let's uh, let me show you the, how the list sweep on this power supply works. So I'm going to go ahead and disable channel two and channel three. So once I disable, you can see now I, I can't do anything with it, right? It's disabled. It's not going to turn on when I turn channel one on. And I'm going to disable channel three. So with channel one, we're going to do a list sweep here. So once I select the list sweep, you can see here we have a table. Table where you can enter all your list voltages and your list current limits too. Right, and this is by default, we've entered for this power supply. You could do a sweep from zero to 60 volt. Now you can edit this right in the table here. I could change this to 50 volt if I want, right? I can add a new row if I'd like. So I just added a new row here. And another nice feature too, that I could import a CSV file from, from the saved in my PC that I've already, that I've already built a list for. And I could export this table into a CSV file and edit it in CSV file. It might be easier. If I have a lot of points, if I want to add more points, add more rows, I could do that, right? You can export this very easy, or you can import an already built list. So in this example, I'm going to show you an already built list that I built for a diode sweep. And I'm going to go ahead and select it, and I'm going to go ahead and import it. So now it's imported. And you get a little message down here in your event log, and you can see that your CSV file has been imported, right? And what I'm doing here is I'm sourcing, I'm sweeping the, my voltage from 0 0.1 volt to 0 0.95 volt, and I'm limiting my current at 1 amp. So I want to look at the output characteristics of a diode. Uh, I'm going to leave my common settings here by in default, but you may you could change them if you'd like, like we said the source to measure the lead for your settling, or you could change your list whole time. You could actually have a whole time at each, if you want some to add a dual time, you could do that. So we have the time here. You could add a dual time here at each point. If, if you'd like, you could do that too. I'm not gonna do it in this example, but we're ready to run. So let's hit run here. Once we hit run, we could go to our graph and we could start seeing our data getting populated. And here I'm going to pick voltage on my x-axis. So I'm going to look I'm going to look at the output characteristics. I'm going to look at current versus voltage, right? And you could see as my voltage increases, my current is increasing just as you'd expect with a diode, right? Uh, when you hit the threshold voltage of a diode, the current start sweeping um, and my current will increase. So I have it all the way to one amp. And what I was doing here, I was just trying to auto scale uh, the graph in there. You could see this is your diode sweep here, where this is what you expected with a diode. Uh, hope this demo was helpful for you and thanks for watching.